Hello, good evening. It is Tuesday e evening. Uh, still dark. <laughs> we haven't got the long days yet, but today is symbolic, and um, that's the midpoint between uh, the winter and spring equinoxes. So it's a good day. Also, it's a Chinese New Year. So uh, I'm continuing to read out of Ludia. Uh, it's a book about uh, reincarnation. It's a follow-on book or story from Bliss After Life, where it started uh, in 2006 when I started to write, uh, and I finished Bliss After Life in 2017. And uh, it was a story about Bliss's death, and we're following her into the afterlife. And then we are moving into a reincarnation, and we are now uh, well into Lydia, and we are at chapter 54 because uh, Mio has given Melanie a list. You have to listen to the other passages, uh, the other uh, chapters to understand. Anyhow, they have all met at the refuge. Chapter 54 is all arrived at the refuge. Silvana and Steve had left midday on Saturday and were at the refuge early afternoon. The samosas were deposited in the kitchen and the welcome was in full swing. By now, they had all met before and the atmosphere was jovial, much laughter and talk. The list sure had inspired everyone and Susan, Holly, Evelyn, the friends of old had gone into the conservatory. So much had happened this year. Microcosm and macrocosm, Holly was laughing at their questioning faces. Well, they say there is much going on in the world generally, with all the talk of shifting consciousness, etc. And then look at our extended family. We have varied nationalities, abilities, beliefs, belief systems, languages. Evelyn looked at her friends. I'm so happy that I can experience the feeling of being a grandmother through your little offsprings. Your mum was such a blessing to me when life was rough. For both of you, those were happy days. Little Ben and Tony, I was glad to be able to see your mum and talk to her about it. Yes, she was a good listener, unless she thought that what she had to say was more interesting than anything that you had to say. Susan was laughing. She wished she could have talked to Bliss about her early days in the household. Holly looked at her. They both thought of their mum regularly, and all three had tears in their eyes when Melanie came into the room and with Frida on her arm. She smiled at all of them and let Frida go, who promptly jumped on Holly's lap. Tony was following Melanie and both sat down with their drinks. Melanie said, uh, Sir Melanie looked at all of them. We are so pleased you're all here. Melanie had sat still. They could faintly hear the talking in the kitchen, but there was an air of expectancy around. She continued. We know the list is intriguing. It has sparked interest in its changing perspectives. Mio paused as Chris had come into the room. He quietly sat down and he met Melanie's gaze. He knew that all of the thoughts he had on the journey and his confusion with the purpose of the question was known by those eyes. He held his breath because somewhere deep down he felt a profound gratitude. He need not say anything at all. It will reveal itself to him and he will find the reason why these points were important. He let out a deep breath and smiled. No one was any the wiser and he was waiting for Melanie to continue. A little smile on her lips, she said. It is best to be open when approaching the points of the list. We delight in you take talking about it all. These matters, uh, uh, talking about all these matters and allowing yourself to question what seems too obvious to be questionable. Chris felt appreciative. 
He did not feel silly anymore and relaxed. He looked around the room. By talking about it, you spark each other's interest. We have given Melanie much insight into the deeper workings here on this planet. Some of the information is only now starting to make sense to her. You see, there is nothing like experiential learning. Alas, you have learned much already over many lifetimes, my friends, and much of what we are wanting you to do is remembering. What is it, this feeling of something soothing, where there is an affirmation? A suspicion never voiced suddenly is said by another, and there is a resonance. Melanie looked around the room. You were talking about frequencies, a smile at Holly. You know it all, you know it all, you knew it all, didn't you, Holly? thought to herself and could see a slight nodding from Melanie. She felt goosebumps and looked at Chris, who in this moment looked at her. Even he feels it, she thought, and Chris smiled at her. You were correct, Holly. They were used against you many times. Can we avoid it? Susan couldn't help but wonder. The music often played through the whole house, and generally it provoked a good mood. The world will discover all this over time. When you make music yourself, and you are able to tune your own instrument, and maybe tune to resonate with others who have instruments too, which they tune themselves, then, not a difficult task in this group, in this house, now, is it? Melanie smiled, looking at all. Ben had been standing in the door. He had Lydia on his arm, who was quietly looking at Melanie. Everyone nodded. When you listen to other music, just be aware to let it make you feel good. The rhythms, the words, the tune. There's much to music, and we do not want you to be paranoid now, do we? Everyone laughed, and Ben stepped aside to let Steve and Zafana into the conservatory. Melanie came back to herself and joined the general conversation. Chris was setting up the movie watching in the large parlour and had said that all should aim for coming in at 8 p.m. They, they were laughing about his strategic planning. Food had been laid out in the kitchen and they had a good hour before they were going to sit down and watch. Holly was waving popcorn around and they were all getting into the swing of this interesting research requested by Mio, the group who had been with Melanie ever since she could remember. David was talking about point 20 on the list, alien visitations, and everyone was listening to him now, as he seemed to have touched on more than one point of the list. Almost all had heard of the Roswell incident and the secret surrounding an alien craft landing in the 1940s, and had all been covered up, but not one of them here now believed the weather balloon story was the correct one. That whole incident and Area 51 are a huge subject matter, and I only looked at a little bit of research. What did come back to me, though, was an old black and white video that I saw around the time that I left England. It was a recording. It struck me so strongly, but I've never been able to find it again. I remember it was a guy called Alex Collier. He was talking about the Andromedans and how he had been captured by them. I remember knowing in my gut that what he was speaking was the truth. He was quite agitated, and I wish I could find it again. I saw it at a friend's house, very weird, because I cannot remember how, it, how he showed it to me, because it was not on television. But I guess this would be covered up any which way. Obviously, they all have to be of more advanced technology, otherwise they would not even be able to come here, to be honest. I have been spending a ridiculous amount of time on this list. 
David looked around the room, smiling wryly. He had worked much at the cottage and had been back and forth to Susan's, but the last few weeks much time was spent at his laptop researching. I'm very glad because I've done hardly anything at all. Faye had been glad for Susan's help in the last week. She dreaded the list a bit. It was, if she was honest with herself, most points felt ominous to her. She had some interesting talks with Evelyn regarding healing herbs, etc., and was more comfortable with that. She was not looking forward to the film to she was looking forward to the film tonight and hoped Lydia would be asleep all the way through for a change, although everybody would be happy to carry her around tonight. David continued, Yes, the amazing thing that I came across was that an uncle of Donald Trump, C.12, on the list, he paused for effect, John G. Trump took all the research Tesla had accumulated out of the safe after his death. I do not know much more right now, but it seems a fact, and you do know that Tesla was researching free energy, etc., so this Donald Trump, who is a property billionaire, by the way, grew up with an, an with an uncle who must have been talking about free energy because that was what Tesla's research was largely about. Point fifteen. He looked around a little triumphantly. Evelyn and, Mar Evelyn and Mark had arrived, and some had moved on into the parlor where Chris had arranged fourteen chairs around the room. The screen was the largest in the house, and he had arranged popcorn and drinks on little tables, drawn the curtains, and Susan had lit some candles to enhance the atmosphere. Everyone was filing in amidst laughter, Ben pretending to look for seat numbers. He settled with Faye, Melanie, and Tony on the large settee. Holly reserved a seat for Chris next to her. He was ushering everybody in, keen to get started. David? Susan, Steve, Silvana, Evelyn and Mark all filed in to find seats and after much laughter and drinks being handed around, Chris dimmed the lights and shushed everybody because the general conversation was still in full swing. Anna and Pete came in with little trays of biscuits. Chris stood in front of the telly and coughed for attention. Holly had to laugh because he had been focusing on getting it all done for everybody. She smiled at him. Chris smiled and he realised this was a fun evening and no need to stress. Hello everybody, thank you all for finally sitting down. Now, as we have discussed, we really need to shut up during this film, because with all 14 of us here, we never get the gist of it if we talk all the way through it. He looked at Susan and Ollie, who already started to giggle. All nodded and Ben exaggerated a vigorous nodding and then shook his head from left to right Indian fashion, which had all of them laughing. Yes, let's be serious for a minute and try to stay quiet. Let the screening begin, maestro. David dimmed the lights and the film o film's opening scenes playing a lovely guitar blues started, with a man and his belongings arriving at a run-down place somewhere in America. Nice blues. Shh! All fell silent. Chapter 54. The movie. They live. Not unexpectedly, the silence was not kept during the film, but they managed with stopping and winding back scenes to watch the whole movie, and they were all quite stunned. Does that answer the question about alien visitations? David got up to stretch himself and everybody started moving around. They had all sat relatively still and had watched with astonishment how the movie developed with an alien race already on Earth disguised as humans discovered through wearing dark glasses which made them visible. They were all rich-looking humans without the glasses. With them you saw the monsters they so obviously were. So funny when he was in the supermarket and that bank scene. It seemed plenty of humans were prepared to help them. It's beyond me why someone would play along with sinister aliens. Seems to have happened before that whole Roswell thing had human corporation. Must have done. David was thinking that he really needed to detach from this all a little. This film tonight had connected quite a few dots in his head regarding the list. He was by far the most engaged, along with Peter, who 
also had his interests for many years and loved listening to Melanie when she talked to Esmia. Did you know that Ronald Reagan talked about an alien threat in 1981? Peter had known that for years, but it really seemed so relevant now. He said it would unite humanity. Melanie looked around and smiled. It is sad, really, that it is portrayed as a threat, because I know for a fact that Mio and group are here to help humankind. I also know that there are many different agendas. She had received quite a lot of information in the last few weeks. With her own pregnancy in full swing, she was not keen to delve too much into the dark side, and Mio knew that. They had, however, been very clear that it was imperative to be conscious of a larger picture, and she had basically received a download with all the answers already, but had not recorded it or even written much down. She just had the answer the moment that she looked at the various points on the list. But it was said that she should be very sparing with information, because it was important that the whole group of them, tonight in this room, do their own research. As much or as little as they felt like it, because every subject raised an awareness which would percolate in each of them. There was no expectation of that list with ready answers at any time soon, and Melanie had made sure to let the others know that they can work on this list at their leisure. Talking about it was bringing it out into the open and each would look into what appealed to them and that could change all the time. It's all very fluid, that is what I am meaning to understand. Melanie felt that a little more info was allowed and continued. Mio said there's no pressure and we should try and make it fun. Like when you three, looking at Tony, David and Pete, went to London to get a feel for things. And I know you all did, because Tony was going on about it. She was laughing as everybody else did. He had been most astonished about the things David and Pete had been pointing out to him, like these magnificent buildings in the centre of London, the intricacy of it all, and apparently all done before the Bosch drill had even been invented. His head had been spinning, and they had spent a good two hours in a pub at St. Catherine's Wharf, right by the Tower of London in the evening, and it had all been quite magical in the end, as they had sat outside with their beers. The, eerie, the area there was very wealthy. Yes, that was a fantastic day, guys. Tony had forgotten many of the facts he had been presented with by David and Pete, but he still felt that he had learned more than a term at school. The problem with me is that it has given me more questions than answers. Tony looked at his dad. He was interested to see how he reacted to the film they had just watched. Son, I'm completely flummoxed. That film was really good and maybe I need a pair of glasses. We all do. Susan was laughing. She actually did need a pair of glasses. Her eyesight was okay, but many of the writing on recipes and food and other things had been so small often that she was going to get some reading glasses next week. I shall get some cheap ones for a clearer vision, and I shall inquire about some of those sunglasses. Who knows what I discover? Everyone was laughing. Anna and Pete opened the French doors into the garden, and David went to put the lights on in the inside-outside space. It was autumn, but it felt mild tonight, and he felt like sitting in the lovely space. Susan followed him. Everybody was milling around and still talking about the movie. To think this movie was made in 1988, that's 24 years or so ago. Our boys were little, and I do not know what I would have made of this film if I had seen it then. Holly was catching up with Susan. She also felt like sitting in the lovely space. David was already setting up the little fire pit. He waved to Ben as he needed some paper to start the fire, and Ben went back into the house. Tony and Melanie came arm in arm into the garden and they were getting some more chairs to position around the fire pit. Melanie loved gazing into the flames. Mio always seemed to be close to her when she looked at dancing flames. She knew there would be some questions tonight and she hoped that she would be allowed to, to give some of the answers. Right, that is the end of this chapter 53. And the next chapter is 54, and I shall read that. No, 55, I think, is the next one.
Yes, this was chapter 54, and the next one is chapter 55. Bye-bye. Happy Tuesday.